Uh, thank you everyone for coming to my honors thesis presentation on lucid dreaming and depression. Without further ado, let's begin. So, sleep is rather important to human functioning and mammalian functioning. Um, rats, when deprived of total sleep, will die within 19 days. Um, humans, uh, when deprived of so total sleep as well, will suffer from psychomotor vigilance and, well, decreases in psychomotor vigilance, working memory, and cognition. Uh, within sleep, it's composed of five stages or so, uh, sleep stages one through four, according to Resha and Kales, and uh, REM sleep. Uh, for the sake of the argument, let's call any stage not REM sleep, slow wave sleep. Uh, all stages are important to human functioning, and when either of them are uh, depleted, human beings and mammals suffer from uh, disturbances in body weight and temperature control and immunity as well. Now, REM sleep has been associated with dreaming, and within dreaming, I believe that there is another also beneficial component called lucid dreaming. So, lucid dreaming is the ability for a dreamer to become aware of themselves from within the dream and to continue the dream without waking up. Lucid dreaming has been validated from a few neurological standpoints. Um, Stephen LaBerge, using electrooculargram, asked uh, self-proclaimed lucid dreamers when they become lucid in a dream to roll their eyes in a REM atypical fashion. And by using this, he was able to, um, first off, signific uh, significantly show that lucid dreaming was attainable. Um, Ursula Voss used a 19 EEG uh, electrode array and uh, quantified lucid dreaming as a measurable distance uh, between uh, dreaming and waking cognition at around 40 hertz, localized particularly in the frontal lobe, which has been associated with uh, executive control. Furthermore, uh, Nofsinger, using an fMRI study, pinpointed lucid dreaming to the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, uh, which has been also associated with executive control and self-reflectiveness. Now, Laberge and Gackenbach, two head names in lucid dream research, espouse lucid dreaming for its mental health benefits, for its ability to allow the dreamer to become self reflective and learn more about themselves. Uh, and uh, Dahl, Gitter, and Herzinger, uh, an Austrian group, showed that frequent lucid dreamers have a higher overall mental health than non lucid dreamers. My study looks uh, it follows her, their footsteps, but with an American population and with a trained lucid dreaming population. So lucid dreaming itself is learnable. Uh, Foley suggests a uh, reality testing technique, whereas Laberge uh, suggests the mnemonic induction of lucid dreaming, mild. I'll go with these more in the procedure. Another aspect that I was looking at was locus of control, which is whether the individual feels that they themselves are in control of their lives or an outside external force is in control. That's an external locus of control. I, external locus of control has been correlated with depression, and an internal locus of control has been associated with lucid dreaming. Internal locus of control also is considered a therapeutic goal. Locus of control is malleable. It can be changed. Uh, one study shows, one study by Sharp, had adolescent alcoholics uh, become attached to a biofeedback device that allows them to visualize their blood pressure and heart rate decreasing and becoming stable when they went through meditation and breathing techniques. Lucid dreaming could also be considered a biofeedback device wherein the individual within the dream could influence the dream and by thought see it be own, uh, their own effects from within. So my study looks towards using lucid dreaming as perhaps a biofeedback device. Furthermore, depression. Now, depression is a very um, troublesome issue for college students, especially because it gets in the way of our academic performance, which is very important to us. Um, depression is prevalent in the college grad and the college population is around 15.6% for us undergraduates and 13% for the graduate population. So I'm looking forward to that decrease when we go to grad school. <laughs> uh, the, rate, the rate has been doubling since 1989 to 2001, has been mirrored in a few other studies, and has been increasing ever since. 
Though there are some researchers who believe that it is not as major of, an, of a plague that needs to be quelled. Um, uh, Andrews and Thompson believe in a theory of functional depression that uh, human beings evolved in order to uh, reduce or to focus their analytical energies towards solving their internal problems. But for the sake of our, for the sake of my study, I plan to look at depression as a negative thing to be resolved. So, my study had two hypotheses. One, that I could significantly increase lucid dreaming frequency in the undergraduate population using an online medium. And two, I propose that lucid dreaming has a significant effect on depression as mediated by locus of control. So, how did I do this? Well, first off, I recruited about 200 participants using a poster based off of the latest uh, dream-related blockbuster hit in section, which was very popular. A lot of students were really excited about engaging in a study that had that title. Mm -hmm. um, and I gave them surveys uh, every weekend uh, online, which was also very uh, enticing for them to join up, as they did not need to come to the lab. So the surveys that I gave them uh, had measures of locus of control, as per Rotter's 1966 locus of control scale, asking questions, binary questions, uh, paired. So one of them would be a more external question, or, or an external statement versus an internal statement and they had to choose which one they felt more connected with. For depression, I gave them the most recent version of the Beck Depression Inventory, the BDI-2, which has been significantly associated with depression. As for lucid dreaming and dream recall frequency, I modified Treadle's and, and uh, Dahl's uh, scales to a Likert scale, and of course, I also added demographic questions. So, for the first survey, uh, was the introductory survey, and I gave them a whole battery of dem demographic questions, as well as the main variables of interest. After the end of this first survey, I randomized each of the participants into one of two groups, the control group and the experimental group. And just like in the matrix, uh, for the control group, the blue pill, you could say, um, I told them that they could continue their daily life and just not try for lucidity. But for the experimental group, I pretty much just let them down the rabbit hole and taught them about lucid dreaming. For the first uh, two weeks, the instructions were just to have a dream diary next to their bed and to write in it every morning whenever they woke up without any regard to any readers. This was just to get them to increase their lucid dream, or sorry, to increase their dream recall frequency. And then after two weeks of these surveys, I changed the ex experimental group's instructions towards trying for the city. I taught them that lucidity, uh, lucid dreaming does exist and gave them techniques to practice in order to become more lucid. So, for uh, Leberge's mild technique, I taught them that before they go to bed, they should repeat to themselves, uh, I will have a lucid dream, I will have a lucid dream, I will have a lucid dream. And as well, I taught them Foley's reality testing techniques, which included uh, the hand check. Uh, I taught them to stretch their fingers within reality, and within dreams it stretch like rubber. Uh, they, I also taught them to double check text and time, whereas in dreams they would be unstable and non-constant. And finally, to double check light switches, uh, but only to try switching lights off, because an inability to turn light on uh, does not warrant uh, an attempt at flight. I also asked them to do a secondary reality check after doing a light test, just to be sure. Uh, after two more weeks of surveys, I thanked them for their time and gave them their credit and then became analysis time. So, for the first hypothesis, I was looking at um, group and dream recall frequency. For that, I used a generalized, well, actually, for both hypotheses, I used a generalized linear mixed model to take into account the effect of the longitudinal nature of the study, as well as for controlling for fixed and random effects. So, for the first hypothesis, I used the GLMM to compare group and lucid dreaming frequency. And for the second hypothesis, I looked at the relationships between lucid dreaming recall frequency, locus of control, and depression, and to see if there was any difference between the relationship between lucid dreaming recall frequency and depression when locus of control was added into the mix. As a result, they were not what were expected, but were interesting nonetheless. For the first hypothesis for this study, I did not find any significant relationship between group and LDS. I believe it was mainly due to patient fide uh, participant fidelity and the length of time used. I'll go over that more in future uh, recommendations. 
for the second hypothesis, we did support uh, past re previous research that locus of control was linearly uh, related to depression. So a high locus of control meant higher depression, or a external locus of control meant higher depression, and vice versa. There was no relationship between locus of control and lucid dreaming frequency for this study, so a mediation model could not be fully created. But most interestingly, there was a very significant linear relation between lucid dreaming frequency and depression. So this was not what I was looking for. Uh, thankfully, because the first hypothesis was not proven, I was not able to actually cause people to become lucid, and therefore there was no state, I cannot make any statement on causality, just correlation. But what does it mean that lucid dreaming frequency and depression are linear related? Well, for depressed individuals, their main symptoms are hypersomnia, some of their uh, symptoms are hypersomnia and insomnia. Um, as lucid, as uh, depression is associated with higher REM sleep, uh, those who are hypersomnatic are dreaming, are sleeping more, and they're having more dreams, and they have more chances to become lucid in their dreams. Those who are insomniatic go into REM sleep uh, quicker, so even when they do finally get to sleep, they're going right into a REM dream, and may be able to conduct um, a wild waking-induced lucid dreaming, where they can go straight from a waking state to a lucid dreaming state. Furthermore, uh, there are some studies that claim that focused attention can be detrimental and that the individual needs to let their mind wander uh, in order to maintain or to avoid fatigue. Finally, Andrews and Thompson believe that depression can have a functional component. Now, we evolved in order to utilize our resources towards, fun towards solving our problems. Their, uh, their makeup or their steps involve a depressing catalyst occurring, causing an individual to become depressed, which brings up some of the symptoms as anhedonia and social isolation, uh, blocking out individuals that can distract you and stopping you from desiring food or sex or anything else that could distract you from rumination, thinking about the problem over and over and over again, um, and perhaps coming up to a effective action, finding a solution, and thereby reducing the effect on of the depressive catalyst on your aspect. Lucid dreaming frequency could fit in well here as a sustained analysis from within the REM period that depressed individuals are experiencing. So what implications does this have for the future population? Well, for the general population, this could be um, an opportunity for the depressed population to find something positive within the depression. Uh, to integrate uh, their desire for finding some solution, to have more lucid dreams, and to enjoy themselves more because they're depressed and perhaps bring themselves out of it. Depressed individuals could uh, share their lucid dreams with one another and by uh, bringing a new light to this currently considered illness, we may be able to reduce the stigma that depression has on individuals. In addition, in line with Professor Scorton's recent statements on improving the mental health in Cornell, individuals can learn to ask for help by speaking about depression more, by talking about their dreams more. Uh, they could be bringing others towards their aid. In fact, functional depression also states that depressed individuals uh, lean others towards their aid. But for the more, so this should not discredit the effect of um, therapy and medication. Individuals should still consider, uh, should still continue to see their therapist, and perhaps by uh, reducing the stigma, we'll see more of a desire to go to their therapist to talk about their dreams, to talk about their issues. Therapists also could utilize lucid dreaming therapy, uh, commonly used for post-traumatic stress disorder and nightmare for nightmare reduction. Uh, they could use therapists could use. LDT on their depressed population who is more prone to lucid dreaming at the moment. But before we implement anything, I still feel that we need to have more research done on lucid dreaming. Um, we, need to have few, we need to have a better idea on the relationship between lucid dreaming frequency and depression, not just a, a correlation, but we need to see how they work in tandem. So this means that the study needs to be replicated. Uh, we need a better, uh, we need to we need to have a better induction of lucid dreaming, which means that 
uh, our participants need to be working on the, on the techniques and perhaps for a longer period of time. My strategy only used LaBerge's suggestion of two weeks, which was not enough, especially not for this basic college population. And perhaps we, in the next study, should utilize Bowie's suggestion of four to five weeks. Furthermore, perhaps for more generalizable information, we can use uh, larger populations on different campuses within different majors. In addition, participants should be, uh, because I could not control for participants' uh, fault, uh, fidelity, uh, there was no way for me to force them to write in their dream diaries. There are a few ways that can make it easier on them. Uh, I could send them uh, supplies of their, their very own dream diary, even labeled as such with a writing utensil to make sure that they have something to put nearby their bed. Or giving them access to an online dream journaling site like lucidopedia.com. Though it's how to become lucid sections could be a detriment to control. Perhaps another website could be made just for the uh, follow-up study. In addition, Perhaps more reliable scales than the self-report used for the uh, use, for example, EEG hat, as I've modeled right here, mm -hmm. um, or even fMRIs. We could utilize um, the 40 hertz spike that uh, uh, Voss found, or um, light the lighting up of the frontal lobe or the exact dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex to explicitly point out, yes, these individuals have become lucid, and we will not have to worry about the dream recall of the participants who may forget their lucid dreams in the morning. Furthermore, I still continue to believe that locus of control should be considered, uh, but perhaps a more nuanced version. Uh, Berger states that depressed individuals have a desire for an internal locus of control, and but ultimately cannot uh, do not exhibit it, and that it may be one of the reasons uh, why there was not much of a relationship between locus of control and lucid dreaming. In addition, a valence, do the individuals believe that all the bad things in the world are happening due to their control, but the positive things are out of their control. So looking at a more nuanced locus of control and having a better uh, induction method of lucid dreaming can, can bring about a better mediation model and a better idea of how does lucid dreaming frequency affect locus of control. And from then, we can start to build on techniques and strategies to implement it into the general population and hopefully, if not cure depression, bring a better understanding of it and understanding of how we are and how we sleep and how we dream. I'd like to thank Professor Forty, Professor Whitlock, Professor Casasola. Without either your help, I probably wouldn't be here. I'd also like to thank Sizer and CSTU. They've been a great help. And uh, my thankful uh, geographer. <laughs> No, please not at all. Oh, thank you. And each of the recording this? No, you can you can turn that off.